Hello, this is Siddharth Damber from Chicago Arthritis and Regenerative Medicine. In this video, I want to discuss really common questions I'm currently hearing from my own patients who have inflammatory arthritis conditions and concern about the coronavirus. So I see quite a few people who have conditions like rheumatoid arthritis, psoriatic arthritis, and ankylosing spondylitis, where the nature of their condition is that they require medication to moderate and modulate their immune system in order to control the active inflammation that's going on in their joints that's causing damage, pain, and disability. And those medications help to prevent those kind of consequences, but those medications also have potential risks. And the, the biggest risk that I want to talk about right now is um, uh, infection risk. All of those medications that work to help control those conditions are in some degree immunosuppressive. And what that means is that it um, reduces your immune system to a degree where you can be more prone to certain types of infections. So um, questions that I'm hearing from people are in large part about um, what are my risks now given the current coronavirus outbreak? So um, this video is really meant to be brief and concise, focus on those kinds of individuals to give you a little bit of guidance in terms of how you should be thinking about things. Obviously a big disclaimer right off the bat, which is um, uh, you should be talking with your own physician directly to be discussing what are your specific risks and issues to get a better handle on what you should be doing with your own health care. Um, uh, this video is meant to be educational and should give you some guidance in terms of how to think about these issues and how to talk about them, but it does not replace a really detailed conversation with your trusted physician advisor. So on a public health level, there's obviously big macro questions with the coronavirus outbreak in terms of um, uh, is there adequate testing available to make uh, diagnoses, uh, eventually um, uh, is there an actual vaccination that could take over a year? And um, in the meantime, how do you isolate people? Are there antimicrobials, antiviral treatments, supportive treatments to help protect people as well? A lot of that is, well, all of that is very big picture, macro, public health, things that um, on an individual level um, uh, don't really give you a lot of um, strategies and tactics for things that you should be doing on your own to help protect yourself and reduce your risk. So on an individual level, I think there's a lot of things that you can be doing now that are worthwhile um, trying and doing and thinking about. First and foremost, understand that if you're taking medications that reduce your immune system, that even before the coronavirus outbreak occurred, you were at a slightly higher risk for infections, meaning that is the baseline risk that you have with those kind of medications. And that risk has not gone higher because of the coronavirus. It's just that people's perception of that risk has gone higher. Um, sometimes when people get a radical change in terms of their awareness of an issue, it can throw them off in terms of how they perceive a lot of other things. And I think that's an opportunity to rethink and get a better understanding for what your risks are and why you're taking something and whether the risk to benefit makes sense. But understand that for most people who are on these kind of medications that it's likely you've already either tried something that was milder before moving on to something that's stronger that's controlling your condition or alternatively you have a condition where you're at such high risk for progressive damage and problems that the risk to reward really makes sense to be taking something to help control that condition to not only improve your current pain and function but to also prevent progressive damage as well. So um, that, that risk has not really increased from your baseline. Number two is um, uh, it's not that your risk of infection has gone higher, right? That baseline risk is the same. Um, but in each and every particular situation, you really should talk with your physician about, look, does this still make sense for me? What is the benefit that I'm getting? What are the risks that I'm taking? Be really clear on that because that's going to vary from person to person. As an example, 
Um, uh, I've had a patient whose job was literally to work for the World Health Organization, digging ditches and latrines in rural parts of Bangladesh. And he's been taking a medication that suppresses his immune system. He's been at high risk for over a decade. But when he thinks about how much these meds improve his life, and he thinks about what's important to him from a work standpoint, he's willing to accept those risks for the benefit. And so you, you need to have that same conversation and um, uh, understanding with your own physician. Number two is um, I'm getting a lot of questions about travel. What should you be doing about travel? And I think there's obvious ones, right? The, uh, um, uh, the CDC and the government has uh, certain travel restrictions and guidance for places that are more endemic with uh, the coronavirus outbreak, meaning places where a lot more people have this. Um, you may be restricted from even going to some of those places, but it goes without saying that um, be aware if the location that you're planning on travel, traveling to has a high um, uh, outbreak of that kind of issue and probably be careful about going there. Um, I think a more common one is people who are traveling on a more weekly basis as part of their work. I think if you're staying domestic and if you're going to an area where there isn't a significant um, uh, infectious outbreak, I think you're probably okay to go there. You're probably not at any higher risk going to travel to another city in the United States than you are staying in Metro Chicago or whatever other urban metropolitan area that you live in. Realistically, this virus didn't start a month ago when it was first discovered in China. Um, this has been probably slowly disseminating for a while. And so if you live in any large metropolitan area where you and probably most people that you know have been traveling either around the country or out of the country in the last six, six months, um, uh, I don't think there's a dramatically higher risk if you're doing routine travel for personal or work reasons within the country. Understand that this is a really fast moving situation and some of that guidance might change from week to week or day to day. Um, a more challenging question is a lot of people going to conferences where there's a lot more people involved, international level conferences. There are medical conferences in the United States right now that are being canceled because there's concerns that people from all over the world are coming and people are not really sure how to handle those kind of risks. Um, I, I think you need to be creative and um, um, uh, thoughtful about um, those kind of situations. Uh, as an example, I have someone who had wanted to go to a conference um, in Denver, um, a worldwide dermatology conference, and he's wondering, is it worthwhile to go? Um, he may be able to do that same conference uh, remotely, watching it by video. I think that would be smart. He may lose some of the benefit of going to that conference that he could get in person, but he has to really take that um, and consider that in a serious way. Um, so again, I, I think it's going to vary from person to person how you think about travel, but be thoughtful, be um, sensible about the decisions that you're making. Don't panic, and you can still make good, thoughtful decisions. What are other ways to minimize risks? So there are a lot of things that we should all be doing to help maintain our overall general health in the optimal manner. And if you're not doing those, this is an opportunity to rethink that and really do that. As an example, on a dietary level, uh, I think there are certain things that just make sense on a dietary level that maybe um, uh, you could improve. So um, uh, probably reducing um, overall red meat, um, a, uh, a bit more of a plant-based diet with reduced um, refined sugars would make sense for all of our healths. If that helps our general health, that can also help our general immune system as well. Uh, if you're not exercising on a regular basis, clearly that's going to be helpful for our immune system as well. Sleep as well. Um, what is your ideal amount of sleep? For me, it's uh, roughly seven hours per night. Uh, yours may be a little bit less, a little bit more, but you, know, you should be trying to target that as well. That's helpful for your overall general health, which means it's overall helpful for your general immune system. In addition, make sure you're up to date with your, your vaccinations. Um, I, I think everyone should be getting a flu shot every single year. If you're at an age or at a risk category where you should be getting a pneumonia vaccination once every five to 10 years, make sure you're doing that. 
In addition, think about your other general health. Um, if you're prone to metabolic syndromes, such as um, uh, you have diabetes or high cholesterol, what are you doing to help optimize your health in that regard? It's, again, just thinking about your overall health and understand that it's connected to your immune system as well. And then make sure you're up to date with your other preventive screening as well. Talk with your general physician. Make sure you're up to date with all of those kind of issues as well. There are a lot of things that you can be doing on an individual level that are big picture healthy for your health. You should be doing those things. The coronavirus or not the coronavirus, you should be doing those things. If this is an opportunity to rethink some of those things that maybe you're not doing, this is a good chance to improve upon that. And one last thing. Again, emphasizing washing your hands frequently throughout the day. You don't need to go out and buy $70 Purell bottles. Good old soap and water is sufficient. Make sure you wash your hands underneath running water for 20 seconds at least. Do that throughout the day, as well as cover your mouth when you're coughing. You don't need to go out and buy masks if you're not actually sick. There's not any protective benefit currently to wearing a mask preventatively or prophylactically. Use common sense in that regard as well. Lastly, no need to panic. Um, uh, you should not be looking for your um, uh, underground bunker um, solution at this stage. You shouldn't be running to the grocery store and buying out all the saltines, all right? Um, be sensible, make good and smart decisions, speak to your trusted physician advisor who understands your health and can help guide you to make good decisions. Don't panic, stay up to date with um, reputable news sources. To me, reputable sources include the CDC, physicians who know what they're talking about, um, uh, traditional media, social media has value, but understand that they may not really be that knowledgeable about what they're talking about. So no need to panic. Follow with trusted sources. Stay up to date. This is a rapidly evolving situation, and um, it is manageable, and um, it's an opportunity to think about risk in a more holistic and comprehensive way than a lot of us normally think about. Thank you for your time. I hope this was helpful. Have a good day and live well. Bye-bye.